remember always that accusation is not proof and that conviction depends upon evidence and due process of law. So my music was theoretic But my revenge is sweet enough to murder diabetics Eugenics, Proctor and Gamble, credit racial science Couldn't produce a more aggressive intellectual giant Nephilim barium with the bullets left in them My heart is blacker than the children A Thomas Jefferson Blacker than back in the days of the tar and feathering A cancerous endocrine The eagle-ass American The hatchet and the sticks The fascist emblem You could call it conspiracy theory I don't give a motherfuck You could get your motherfuck National securities are Cold word for cover up, hold that down. I look at character, never let the color get to you. I got white happy music. Play your rhythm sticks or clap, just as you did before, like this. About 20 miles south of Sacramento, California, in the heart of one of the most agriculturally productive regions in the world is a reminder of the big city. What it do, folks? Permanent Patriot here. Back to blow your mind. So I hope you folks are ready for the rubber room. And uh, by the way, rubber room. Let's knock that out of the way. I'm not talking about this kind of rubber room, folks. <laughs> Although, by the time you're done watching the shit, you may need one. No, we're talking about NASA's rubber room. Okay. But anyways, that's a whole other story. Everybody greet Valiant Thor, our friend from Venus. Uh, this guy was trying to help us. And our our government spoke for us, and, well, I want to read you folks a story that is straight up fucking truth, because it's in government papers, and senators and congressmen have admitted, will admit, that they know this man, they've known him many years, been in the White House since the 50s. And I believe he's about 400 years old. 450? Or was it 150? The guy's fucking old. Okay. Now look, this picture here still fucking looks like that. Still looks like that. Hasn't changed. There's another picture of a, an alien from Venus. Forget her name. I think her name's Nancy. I came with a crew of three other people. That's Frank Strange's right there. Doctor Frank Strange's. Uh, folks, take a listen to the story. Okay, that's a completely different thing. How is this here? Space alien work for U.S. government. Valiant Thor. There he is again. Phil Schneider talked about him. There's a bunch of other links. There's even in the fucking Snowden thing where the US alien Hitler connection was made. Okay. So the first meeting was March 16th, 1957, Alexandria, Virginia. He met Dwight Eisenhower. Um, so pretty much, pretty much, uh, introduces himself to the president, tells him why he's here and everything. Photos taken, blah, blah, blah. Uh, he's got this, now check out what he's wearing. Acid rolled off the uniform and burned a hole in the floor. They did everything to this suit. Indestructible. 
head. No cuffs, no pockets, no buttons, no zippers, no clips, no hooks. He waves his hand over the suit and it closes or opens. Something to do with an invisible force. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so now we're at the Pentagon. And da, da, da. a lot of this is uh it's it's all I mean right down to the fucking detail. So you gotta like read everything. Um so Anyway, the warm smile, he extended his hand and greeted me by name. Hello, Frank, how are you? His genuineness astonished me, but I quick, quickly I understood. Talk goes on to talk about how his uh, skin is like baby skin. Um, yeah, the suit's made of material not of this earth. Guys from Venus, okay, and folks, the Russians have been, I've told, I've done videos on this. The Russians have been going to Venus for years. And the Americans have been going to Mars for years. Okay? <laughs> what the fuck do I gotta do to prove it? Jeez. Damn, man. Government officials admitting this shit. Now listen to this shit. He told me his purpose in coming was to help mankind return to the Lord. He spoke in positive terms. Always with a smile on his face, he said that man was further away from God than ever before. But there was still a good chance if man looks in the right place. He told me he'd been here nearly three years and would depart in just a few months, claiming that he would not use force to speak with men in authority in America. He was happy to consult with them at their invitation. He further stated that, Thus far, only a few men in Washington knew of his existence, and few leaders had availed themselves of his advice during these past three years. He felt there was still so much to do, and yet his time of departure was getting near. He told me Jesus Christ would not force men to be saved from their mistakes, even though he had already made way for mankind to be redeemed through his shed blood. When I asked him where he was from, he replied, I'm from the planet that is called Venus. I asked him how many visitors from Venus are presently on Earth, and he said there are about 77 uh, among us. They're constantly coming and going. So during the next 30 minutes. Um, so later, he was able to verify shit with his parents, blah, blah, blah. Gave him information regarding the gravitational pull of Venus in comparison to Earth. Folks, do you know I mentioned this? Gravity doesn't exist. They're still looking for it. Okay? Hello? Anybody? Gravity does not exist yet. They just found the fucking gravity waves. I just seen the article a couple days ago. Gravity waves discovered. Hello? Blah, blah, blah. He gave me information which would be revealed to others over a period of years. He had no fingerprints. Uh, he learned the science of fingerprints with the impression of lines and the whirls on the inner surface of the last joint of each finger on the human hand. He told me that all earth people were thusly marked since uh, the fall of Adam in the Garden of Eden during the very dawn of civilization as we know it today. So he's saying that the reason we got fingerprints is so we can discern humans from demons. Now the Indians had some shit where when they said how uh, it wasn't to say hello. It was to make sure you had five fingers and not six. Which these fucking fallen angels and demons have. So he told them what's coming ahead and everything. Uh, there'd be adversities, organized attempts to both discourage and discredit him. But the rewards would prove to, uh, to be worth it. Uh, they discussed the merits of Jesus Christ. He gave his life freely so that men can enjoy benefits of eternal life. 
I questioned him about a Bible on Venus, and he assured me that a personal unbroken fellowship with the author did not necessitate the printing of a book. He found it amusing that many theologians attempt to discredit both Jesus Christ and the Bible. The very God many have said is dead continues to lavish them with all good things. Perhaps they will in time permit the spark of divine light to again illuminate their tro troubled hearts. In answer to my question of what he thought of Jesus Christ, he said, I know that Jesus is the Alpha and Omega of yours and everyone else's faith. He today has assumed his rightful position as the ruler of the universe and is preparing a place and a time for all who are called by his name to ascend far above the clouds to where his power and authority shall never again be disputed. I believe Jesus Christ is the wonder of wonders and changes not. No, not forever and ever. As he spoke these words, my own heart burned within me and tears filled my eyes. He turned to the window and said, Frank, it will not be long. Contend for the faith, and you will never miss the mark. I asked him if there's life on other planets. He said there's life on many other planets, which people on Earth know nothing. There are more solar systems for which man is not even giving God credit. There are many other beings that have never transgressed the perfect laws of God. Man does not possess the right to condemn the whole of God's creation because he himself has broken the perfect laws of God through disobedience. I asked him if, what he would do if the military prevented him from leaving. He said, Frank, do you remember one day after Jesus arose from the dead? He had gone in several search of several of his followers. They closed themselves in a locked room and suddenly they saw Jesus standing in the very midst of them. He then smiled and looked at me as if to imply, need I say more? As I turned to leave the room, he simply said, please keep your faith and leave the same way that you came in. Continue to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all other things will in time be added to you and yours. Goodbye for now and God bless you and keep you always. Now, perhaps, I think I might have missed the part that I talked about, <clears throat> yeah, so here we go, um, so it was pretty much saying why he was here telling the government blah, blah, blah. anyways talking about how he went to government tell them why he was here and uh, they pretty much said we can't tell the people that they're not ready for that who the fuck is he who the fuck are they to say what we're fucking ready for. Now this is the real deal. This is this is the good side, not the bad side. This is the good side that came to fucking help us out. And they fucking kept them kept them from us while the fucking evil came in. I don't know if this guy's still around or what. Uh could finish the story, but it's a lot. On March sixteenth, they all dematerialized and departed from this phase of his earthly mission. His next stop was the outskirts of Alexandria where his ship and crew awaited his arrival hidden by a wooded area. It was no problem for him to reassemble the atoms of his body into his ship. Star Trek. Star Wars. Even ground radar lost them on their equipment. Fugit once again rain. Those who knew of his presence, yet yeah, who claimed disbelief, were those who feared the most. Others figured they should have been the ones contacted and not those who were. He was given the following instructions. To mingle with and become as earth people. To work and labor in earth enterprises. To help those who encounter possible threat or danger while striving for world peace. To give them advice and guidance. To entrust with superior knowledge those who have proven themselves. Divulge the essence of their mission to the collective national leaders of Earth only when the time is right. As of this writing, he continues with this mission. 
at the same time assisting in preventing our civilization from being the cause of orbital chaos by the destruction of our planet. A uh, couple quick things. I've heard that this guy's got six fingers. I've not confirmed that. Uh, at this point, it's just hearsay. But the shit that he's talking, the reasons he's here and everything, it sounds pretty fucking legit like somebody that's really on our side. I mean, seriously, folks, you can't have all these demons and shit coming in and not have some balance here, you know? So there's a real fucking story. U.S. government white papers. You can even fucking email some senators and congressmen and fucking, I'm sure, presidents that will admit fucking guy works there or did work there. Want to learn more? Check out the links below. That's it for now. God bless and carry on.